Well, what a week it has been and how quickly it has flown by. A packed conference agenda with hundreds of expert speakers talking to more than 18,500 delegates about the very biggest questions facing the financial sector. And the final day of Cybos 2021 did not disappoint. We've heard a lot throughout the week on ESG topics and debated some of the most pressing questions of the day on climate, diversity, inclusion and sustainable finance. In her view from the top, the chairman of Hong Kong Exchanges and Clearing, Laura M. Cha, argues that ESG ESG considerations were important to everyone. I think it has to come from to both top down and bottom up. The younger generation, they naturally they have a, a much more um, keener affinity about the environment, about you know or social issues. But it also need to have the leadership from the top. So I think we are trying to encourage the boards of listed company as an example to set the sustainable uh, agenda, sustainability agenda. So it has to be both ways. And then of course the government plays a role in that. The issue of whether sustainability reporting needs to become mandatory if we want better transparency and decision making was the subject of a fascinating panel session. Do you want disclosure to come from the asset managers? Or do you want the disclosure to come from the corporates? My preference always would be corporates, because if corporates are required to provide disclosure on their ESG credentials, investors will be able to make smarter decisions and can be held accountable for using or not using that uh, available disclosed information. I see not a lot of unification currently. There needs to be more unification of regulations and clearly set of standards. We tend also, as uh, regulators always want to be as pro progressive as possible, to be very complex. But the smaller the company gets, the more problems they have with complexity. So we need to translate the sustainability targets from a complex overall global view into a handle where, where really everybody can act and the size of the company matters here. The closing keynote was delivered by Mark Carney, the UN Special Envoy on Climate Action and Finance, and his call to action was centred around harnessing the collective power of the financial industry to tackle climate change. One of the issues he raised was carbon offsetting. This market, for all the headlines, is only about a billion dollars a year. I mean, it is small. Um, and it's fragmented, it's um, inconsistent, and that's why there's been this enormous effort to professionalize it. Um, and a professional market um, that is now in prospect, anchored in Singapore, London, uh, but real truly global. Um, you know, this is 100 to $150 billion a year market if, uh, if we get it right. And the only way it becomes that big is if it's high integrity. He also spoke about the financial challenge of transitioning to net zero. The world needs 100 to 150 trillion, um, half of which, as you know, will be uh, spent in Asia over the course of the next three decades uh, for this transition. So Cybos 2021 ended as it began, discussing some of the biggest and most profound questions about how the financial ecosystem can best meet societal demands in the future. Well, the Cybos conference might be over for another year, but remember you can still catch up with the sessions you missed online. You can register up to the end of October and sessions will be available till the end of December. So from Johnny and me, it is goodbye for now. And we hope to see you all in Amsterdam for Cybos 2022.